In regards to teamwork, it is often said that the sum is more than its parts. But is it true that teams always generate higher output? Social loafing is one of the most well-known concepts. It describes that people are prone to show less effort when working in a group than they would if they work alone. Probably the first research on this phenomena was done by Maximilian Ringelmann in an experiment on rope pulling. He discovered that with increasing group size, the individual contribution decreased. Social loafing often has negative effects on the group cohesion and causes more emotional tension while productivity decreases. There are different reasons for individuals' loss of motivation when working in a team. Of course, some people might just lay back because they know that others will compensate. This is known as free rider effect. Others might just hold back their ideas and efforts if they have the impression that other team members are better, smarter or stronger. Imagine a group of eight, whereof three exert social loafing. What happens to the motivation of the remaining five who have to do all the hard work? If this happens repeatedly, they might get a feeling of being exploited and unsatisfied. As a consequence, one or the other team member might reduce the workload intentionally or stop collaborating. This effect is called the sucker effect because the team member no longer wants to be the sucker. No matter if in sports, business or education, you'd normally want to avoid these effects and there are certain measures you can take. First of all, limit the group size. When you want to get as many viewpoints and ideas as possible, for example during a brainstorming, you want to have a big group. But to get things done, you would want to limit the group size in order to avoid social loafing. If a goal is too easy, it is not necessary that everyone contributes and the chances that someone will loaf increases. That is why you want to set clear and challenging goals. Depending on the task and for certain individuals, benchmarking with other groups can lead to an additional motivation. Another tip is to make individual contributions identifiable, at least as good as possible. The next tip is to increase involvement, for example by pointing out the importance of the individual effort or facilitating the team process. We have seen that social loafing can occur especially within bigger groups, with unclear goals and unidentifiable individual contributions. It sometimes needs quite a bit of effort to find appropriate ways to help weaken these effects. But it is worthwhile and necessary if the sum should be more than its parts.